Hi, I'm Ramson Kachi. I'm the founder and principal of Kachi Design Build and Stone Lab Services. I've been in the design and construction industry for over 25 years. I've decided to do an entire series around my own personal real estate investment. I'll be taking a builder's custom-like home and then taking it to an entirely new level. Welcome to Bespoke in the Burbs. Hey guys, welcome to episode two. Today's an exciting day. Got a lot to shoot, a lot of things to do. Um, we started off a little bit slow waiting for uh, Fernbrook to break ground, but uh, now things are happening. So now I'm on my way down to Kingscrest. Kingscrest is another subdivision that uh, Fernbrook has recently done. We actually designed and decorated the model home in that place and it turned out fantastic. Now in the basement of the model home is where they have the exterior finishes for West Ham, the subdivision that we're building this house for this project on. Now I've got to go down there to select all the exterior finishes on the outside of the house. Now Fernbrook has their finishes that they supply, a variety of stones and bricks and, and some of the other materials, stucco and, and some composite sidings. What's wonderful is that they give you the opportunity to maybe go and select other finishes beyond that if you want. So meaning like the brick, I can actually go to Brampton Brick and see what else they have and if I want to go with something completely different they will allow me to do that um, so it's great because they let you customize to the point that every house on the subdivision on the street will become very unique in its own way and that's what we want we don't want cookie cutter and that's that's exactly uh, what we want to avoid anyhow I'm gonna go down there and and select some of the finishes for the exterior now on site they've dug all the holes uh, all the excavation is done you can see how all the houses lay out and more importantly they're just about to start forming uh, for the footings so all the formwork for the footings are going to go in and this is the opportunity for us to really get a sense of the footprint of the house and to really see how big it's going to be how it's going to lay out and as it starts to come up out of the ground you'll really get a great sense of that so we're going to head down there and let's go take a look at what we got to do for the exterior finishes this is king's crest well we're a day late i got sidetracked but nevertheless we made it here let's go inside and pick the finishes So in the basement of this model home, they have the finishes for the exteriors. Now these have been the finishes for King's Crest and King's Crest is a subdivision where the homes are a different price point, they're bigger, but nevertheless they're using the same finishes and applying them to West Ham and we're going to pick here. So what do we have to pick from? Well, the majority of the finishes on the outside are stone and brick. The challenge is really envisioning how it's going to come together because looking at a small sample like this is just not enough. It's very hard to see how these things will relate. So you've got stone here. Now I've done some homework ahead of time, okay? And I know roughly where I'm going to go. I'm not going to go into this kind of stone where you've got a lot of dark pieces. I'm not going to go so gray like this. I'm going to be in this range here. How do you couple that with some brick that works with it? I mean, the bricks are all over here. Like, I, you know, you can't really envision everything, not to mention that what you see here isn't exactly what it's gonna look like when it's up on a wall that's 30 feet high, 40 feet long, and, and, and how's that gonna look? So luckily, they've done a lot of these finishes in this subdivision, so it's great to be able to go outside and take a look and see how it looks on a house. You got another finish, which is the roof, and that's another one that's really difficult to decide on which route you're gonna take. So when it comes to roofing, often when we re-roof houses for clients or when we're building a new house and we're selecting a roof, it's just not enough to look at this. I mean, if you're going black, that's one thing, but if you're gonna get into weathered wood or you're gonna get into driftwood where you got that variation in color, what's it gonna look like on the entire roof? Well, we send people around and we say, you know what, we did this house at this address, go and look at the roof. It is done in weathered wood and you'll see what it looks like. And then second to that, when we're building, we get um, three or four tabs and we've actually nailed them on to give people uh, an idea of what it looks like. But we're not gonna go to that extent. Here we can see the roofs. I know we're gonna go in this range for the stone. I know that I want this brick here. Now it's really important to see what this looks like. When we go outside, I'm gonna talk about that. And then we've got a few other elements. You've got your windows. That's a big thing. A lot of people are going with black windows. 
I don't love that. I don't want to go so stark with the contrast, black windows and all the mid-tones and all the other colors. So I'm thinking I'm going to go into something more like the sable. Uh, not so light, like this kind of a light taupe color, but more into sable, so it just reduces the contrast. All the eaves troughs and soffits and fascia are going to be in the sable as well. And I've got to select um, a roof, which I'm thinking I'm probably going to go into a weathered wood, or maybe uh, that's weathered wood as well, I think. So those are the same. I, I think that's really the choice for the roof. I like the look of that. And we'll look outside as well. And then we've got the last thing, which is the front door. So Fernberg puts a fiberglass door in, which I actually don't mind because it's got a wood grain embossed into it. They put a solid stain on it, which looks beautiful and it makes it very durable and not so susceptible to the sun beating on it, especially certain houses when you have that um, southern exposure and the sun's constantly beating down on that front door. It really really kills it. So it's a great product, but you've got choices between a mahogany wood grain or an oak wood grain. The mahogany is really striated and vertical and straight lines, whereas the oak is more of a flat cut oak, a little bit more traditional, but it's a heavier grain, so it shows itself up as wood uh, a little bit better. So you've got an espresso color, dark walnut, and you got Spanish oak, and my choice on that is a no-brainer. I love this dark walnut. That's the way we're gonna go. Let's go outside and take a look at how these things come together. So this is a great place to get a sense of what everything's gonna look like. And right behind me is a perfect example of what I meant with the brick. So when we look at that brick, right there you see the variation in color. And when you have a massive wall, I love the fact that that breaks it up. And that's exactly the brick I'm gonna go with. So I love the way that looks. Now, looking around this place, and I look right down here, and I love the way that stone looks. And in contrast to that is a stone beside it, which is a bit too gray. So that is a bit too gray for me. The one on the second house, the perfect look. It's that buff mix and I love the warmth of it. Couple that with the weathered wood roof that's on top. That's a great look. That's a great look. Group them together and I think it'll be something magnificent. So I know I'm 98% sure. Now there's that 2% and I really need to clinch that 2%. To clinch that 2%, it'd be great to really look at that elevation and to see how that color balance will come together. Now for clients, we often do computer generated color renderings and it's a great tool. In this application, I really don't want to invest the time in the office to create computer generated um, elevations of this house. I think taking an elevation on paper using the markers that we have and coloring it in will give me a good sense of what that exterior balance of color will be and that is all I need to clench that last two percent so the next step is getting into the office and doing that so I just finished coloring in these elevations now I decided not to do full computerized color renderings because it takes so much time and effort and I thought it's not worth it for this. I want a general idea of the elevation and what the color balance is going to be on the outside and using these Prisma, uh, Prisma color uh, uh, markers is just more than enough. They're fantastic. You can shade with them, blend with them and there's so many colors we have uh, I can get a good sense of what the balance is going to be. Uh, we talked about the stone. I am great with the stone selection. I'm really comfortable with the brick selection on the outside. Those two are going to balance well. Then there was a question, uh, we talked about the windows. So like I said before, most people go with commercial brown or black. And I think in that case, um, it's too dark. And I think I, I've been there, done that, and I'd really like to uh, go with something a little bit lighter, but not too light. I'm gonna go with sable. That's perfect for me. It's a nice balance. I can go a little bit lighter in the woodwork on the outside. And I love the way this is working out now. I, I like the balance with that copper roof over the top. And uh, when I look at the color balance in here, it just is comfortable to look at. That's what I look at. A house should be beautiful and comfortable to look at. It shouldn't be over the top in any way. It shouldn't jump out at you. It shouldn't be obnoxious looking. And I think I'm there. So stepping back now, uh, looking at the floor plan, and some of the areas, that corner in the back, which is called the loggia, which is really an open patio, it's off to the side. So I don't see anybody really using that a lot. And these are areas that, yeah, it's nice to have, but if you're not gonna use it, then what's the use? So I'd like to close that in, and, and we discussed that earlier on, that I'd love to close that in and add that space to the garage for added storage. Um, I don't know if I can do that yet. We're, we're working on that and I'm researching that. 
At the minimum, I'd like to take the, the uh, brick wall around as a knee wall in that area uh, if I can't close it in. And that way it gives me somewhat of an enclosure and people can put a lawnmower in there and a few other things and it's not visible and you can store stuff in there. Um, and if you want to use it as a sitting space, you can and that's fine. So I am thrilled with the way this is looking. I have a good comfort level with where I'm headed and this part to me, out of the way, let them keep working, and I'll start focusing on the inside. So now we're gonna work on the interior of the house and, and really look at the floor plan. That's where all the changes are gonna be made that are gonna make this house so livable. So I've got Ada here with me, I've got Kara here with me. They're both designers in my office that work on all these projects with me. Um, in fact, we work hand in hand almost every single project. So we're gonna start looking at this floor plan. You guys are somewhat familiar with it, yeah. right? And I've got some ideas of what I want to do, and we'll start right off the bat on this main floor. Um, one of the biggest changes I want to make is this, this floor here in this front foyer where you step in, and this mudroom are sunken down, and I don't want that. I want to bring them all up. I want the entire main floor on one level. Um, and if you disagree with anything, just let me know. Um, so right off the bat, this is going to be raised up. I want to create closets all the way along here. So this whole thing I want to make into closets and have double doors. You never have enough. And I know that's just front hall closets, but that's okay. I'm going to make some other changes as well. So as you come through here, we've got a laundry room and a, and a kind of a secondary closet area, which I think is not great. So I'd love to get this laundry room out of here. And I'd love to get rid of this closet. And I'd like to actually put this door here. So put a door here and make this whole thing a mudroom, right? One big space. One big space. And then when you step out here, we'll create a platform, step down so we can have another step here or maybe just one step along the whole thing, you know. And then I'd love to look at closing this in and making this part of the garage. Mm -hmm. So this and this becomes uh, storage and garage. So we have lots of room to park your cars and then all the other junk goes back here. So that cleans up this side of it. And then... Um, so those doors get closed. Also. Yeah, so we don't really need these then, right? The and you've got a fireplace here. And what if we move this fireplace and put it right here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes more sense to lay out. Right? Mm -hmm. So we'll put the fireplace here and get rid of these doors, so that's gone. So you've got this end wall here with a fireplace TV over top of it, visible from everywhere, right? And then we'll rework these windows, and I'd love to put maybe patio doors here or something. Uh, window, maybe patio doors, maybe another large window here. And then the biggest change in here I wanna make is, um, I wanna turn this island this way. I want to make a massive island this way. And then I want to put, so if we do these doors here, um, whether we put this here or whether we pull it back a bit, I, I don't know yet, so we'll see. And then a table will go here with seating, and then this is where all the seating will be in here, right? So if we have room, I'd like to put something here if we can. So we have to kind of play with this and see. But if I do this table, or this island here, with seating on the back, and then I can do a really nice um, cooktop centered on here. I like right? that orientation better. Right, and then maybe some pantry cabinets, some ovens. I'd like to take this wall out and carry all of this straight through here. That way it makes this part of this kitchen, and then even wrap this um, cabinetry here. So I would put my fridge here, and then utilize this for pantry, fridge, cooktop here, and I'd like to actually, 36 inch cooktop is not enough mm -hmm. for a busy family. I'd love to consider putting two cooktops, Double you know? It. So mm -hmm. when you're having big parties and, and there's lots of stuff on the cooktop, it, just having five burners is not enough. So you need that, that excess. So this carries through and then this servery can be used at, on a daily basis. So um, one of the other changes I wanna make is I want, instead of a window, I wanna widen this and I want to make um, patio doors here as well with like three doors, but the side ones won't open. Four doors, but the side ones won't open. So I have an entire bank of, bank of uh, doors. And a lot of light. I like that. So just like massive windows. So um, our elevation will not have 
um, this porch here. So this will all be um, landscaping and shrubs maybe. Mm -hmm. And then our, our um, porch will be like that. So that, that's, that's the main changes I want to make on the first floor. So this change here of getting rid of this um, laundry space is going to make huge differences on the second floor. Now what's, what's awesome is that Fernbrook will let me make all these changes within this footprint. So they'll, they'll let me change everything I want as long as it doesn't create more cabinetry, more finishes, or more square footage. So you want to move this here, you want to eliminate this wall, you want to change this wall over to this way, they don't care, right? As long as it conforms to, to the bylaws and they, they, you know, um, it doesn't create more cost for them. Sure. Um, so we go on to the second floor. This is where I want the most changes. So uh, one of the things is I, I hate semi ensuite bathrooms like this. I think it's just such a waste. You know, you got a door here, door here, tiny um, vanity, and the shower. shower. Battle. Yeah. yeah, it's just not. It's not great. So I don't mind these closets like this. What if we close this door? And what if we put this vanity this way? So you have a good size vanity. You come in, you've got a private washroom here to this bedroom. Okay, I don't love this toilet in front of the door, but it is a private washroom. What we'll do is close off the side of this closet or this shower. So we can put the toilet paper holder on the side and you've got a private shower. So this becomes the guest suite, That's nice. right? Mm -hmm. Then we got to deal with these two. So I think we should steal, because this is, do you agree this is useless space in this bedroom? Yeah. Like you walk in, you can't, what are you going to put here? It's got a slope ceiling. So why don't we take this space and depending on how this all turns out mm -hmm. um, and put our shower here right with a bench and I know this is slope so I know this is going to be dead and what if we put the vanity on this side and then put our toilet here that's nice. The toilet is right, so you away. walk in and, and, and that's the way it's set up, right? Yes. But I think this door should pull back a little bit to create this kind of symmetric hallway here, yeah. right? So we'll put this door here, we'll put this door here. Add you can read all my changes. Bathroom. Can you read all my changes okay? Yeah. All right. So the scribbles get a little bit out of whack <laughs> here, so it gets a little crazy. Um, so this this kind of stuff here, I, I don't. This is our elevation here. So I know that um, this is technically going to be the bathroom. I don't know how much depth we'll have. So once I send these to the architect, and he updates them, send them back. We'll figure it out. And I know we have this layout for this closet here. This is kind of goes like this. And I know we're going to have a little niche here. So we'll leave that open, and and this ends up being wider, like that. It goes like that. So the room is. It's square, yeah, mm -hmm. so it's better. So I think we'll, we'll wait to do that. Most importantly, we get onto this area, which is the walk-in closet and master bedroom. So here's the challenge. Um, when you're dealing with spaces, you really have to look at hallways. And often people put walk-in closets in and all that, but they create all these walking spaces that offer no value to storage whatsoever. So if you rethink it and pull out all those walking spaces, and then rework the storage spaces so they're more accessible without the need of that walk-in space being in there. I'm gonna give a, a perfectly simple example. So often people make walk-in closets in a, in a four foot deep um, closet by maybe five feet wide, okay? So they'll put a door and, and come in and, and they can only hang stuff back here, okay? So they get clothes hanging back there. So essentially you walk in from the bedroom and here's your bedroom. You walk in from the bedroom, you stand in here and you access your clothes. Well, why bother doing that? Why not just make a closet that deep, put uh, a bunch of doors on it and hang your clothes here and stand here and grab your clothes and then give all this space to that next room over, right? Mm -hmm. So this is how you rethink the floor plans and make it a little bit more sensible. So that is the problem here. You walk through and you got this passage here, which, um, this essentially is a hallway and offers no storage value whatsoever. So what I'm suggesting is we rework all of this and... Um, Again, too many doors. Too many doors. And, and what if we rework all of this and create a laundry room here. This is a washer dryer. This is our countertop with a sink. So 
we walk in here and this becomes a laundry room for the second floor, okay? And then we pull this back here. Um, we can pull it in a bit here. So we can, we can play around with this. I think we're gonna have to play around with this and we come here like this. So if we do this and put a door here and create a rectangular room. So get rid of all this, get rid of all this. So you have this nice size room. We'll center the window, which they will do for us, no problem. And then we've got a footprint for a bathroom here. And then we've got all of this for a walk-in closet, wow. right? So you walk in here and from here you walk into your bathroom, right? So what can we do here? We can essentially, I mean, to just quickly, we can do a shower here. We can do our tub here. We can put our toilet here and then we can do our double vanity here right so you walk in it's a center plan vanity and toilet on the right shower and tub on the left and then we'll center this window I like that. to the outside yeah. and right the toilet is tucked away again. Okay. so yeah toilets tucked away we'll, we'll, we'll design a vanity that kind of encompasses that and, and you don't see it so all of this becomes walk-in closet right plenty of storage okay. now um, we cleaned it up and we managed to get a, a small laundry room upstairs because what I was thinking is to have a small laundry room upstairs for everyday stuff and then have a, a full functioning laundry room downstairs for all the big family stuff. So kids things tend to accumulate and pile up and you know when you have kids in the house and, and it just piles up right you get a lot of towels and things all that stuff can go downstairs uh, quick laundry stuff can happen up here right so let's go down to the basement so the house has a finished basement and it's laid out right now like this so we've got the staircase that comes down a landing area you've got this space that's useless this space that's useless because the flooring was uh, lowered right you had a sunken um, area here and, and here so we're going to raise those areas so we got full height ceilings and um, that will allow us to utilize these spaces. What are the ceiling heights down there? Nine feet? I think they're nine feet. Yes. Yeah, they're nine yes. feet mm -hmm. and then ten feet on the main floor and then nine feet on the second floor. Yes. So I'm, I'm talking and thinking at the same time. I know our cold room is like this so let's worry about that later. So what if we bring this to a kind of, you come in and there's an opening in line with the cold room door and then we put a whole laundry suite here. Washer and dryer and a sink and, and just line it all up here with maybe some nice doors so it's hidden, yeah. right? But this area, um, you've got this games room here which I don't know why you'd need a games room. Um, so why don't we turn this, what I'm thinking is I utilize this for an everyday kind of utility room of laundry, ironing, um, folding, crafts, uh, rec room, everything, right? So close this door to the furnace room. And because our electrical panel is going to be here, this is the front of the house, and I know the electrical service is going to come around here. It's not going to go into the garage. It's going to come around here. So we put closets down here. So double doors on these closets. You got lots of storage. We have all this room. We can do a big island down here and create a room that you can and come eliminate in. this closet. Yeah, eliminate that and, and leave a large opening. Right? Doorway. Maybe maybe double door, uh, an open doorway, maybe even yeah, not even a door, right? Yeah. And then we've got this area underneath the stairs. So the furnace, the hot water tank, all goes in here. What I don't love is the door to the theater coming in from here because. If your TV is going to go on this wall, you got a door coming in, it messes everything up. So I'd love the door to come in the side. So how do we do that? Well, we create an alcove here, right? Keep it open, put the door here. So you walk in to the room from there, close this up. That way our screen can be centered on here. We can raise the step up here and, and put seating all the way here and now that's a perfect theater that's from great. here we put a door into the furnace room yeah. so that's our utility room and then we have this entire rec room here which this is not going to exist because we're moving our fireplace upstairs and then we have this area here <clears throat> which now the floor is going to get raised we'll put a shower back here put a toilet here we'll put a vanity here and we'll do a bathroom right here Right. That's great. Turn the door. 
If this becomes a bedroom, you have a bathroom right there. <clears throat> well, you there. got a cold cellar here. So if I actually finish the inside of this room, this becomes a walk-in closet. This becomes a, a full bedroom. So what we'll do is actually take this door and change it to a door. This becomes a full bedroom with a closet or bathroom and a full walk-in closet, and it's going to have full-size windows. Um, or it can be an office, or it can be anything you want. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And and we can always widen this opening, or maybe put double doors or whatever, so that later on it can just be a party room. Yeah. Right. Great. Wow, <clears throat> that's a lot of talking. <laughs> I need some water. <laughs> All right, now it's your turn to critique what I'm saying and say, yes, it works, or no, it doesn't. I, 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 I actually, I'm looking at this, and I just kept going and going here, and it looks like it's going in the right direction. So I think what we need to do is figure out these windows. I do not want windows in the theater. theater yeah. So I'd like to eliminate these windows. Definitely want large windows here. Mm -hmm. That's one thing the Fernbrook does. They put nice basement windows in, and I think definitely in, in this area we want a window, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I love the basement. It looks amazing. Yeah. I think it becomes usable because, you know, at the end of the day, if the kids want to get away, they'll go into the theater. They'll play on that TV. <clears throat> You've got this area as a family space. Um, you know, when, when people come home and you're, the kids are doing homework, everyone's hanging around, you're making dinner, everyone's here, right? Yep. It's a good family home. Good. I feel good about that. So our next step <clears throat> is to clean up the drawings and actually um, draw on them nicely, make the changes, send them to the architect's office, have them make all the changes, and, and keeping in mind that they have to maintain some guidelines with regards to um, bylaws and you know, their permit applications and things like that. And if everything that we want to do works on their side, they'll make all the changes, send them back to us, we'll mark them up again. Refine things, especially locations and windows. That's where I think most people, when they're building houses, make a huge mistake. They make mistakes in that they put arch top windows in. They don't think about the implications on the inside and how we how we have to deal with those with window coverings. They don't <clears throat> center the windows on the inside of the house. Uh, they don't think it's as important as it looking good on the outside, and then it causes uh, problems on the inside of the house when it comes to furnishing and lining up rooms and making things look good on the inside. So we have to balance that, have it look good on the outside, and also have it look good on the inside. Okay, elevations on the outside, done. Floor plans, all the changes, done. I feel great about all of that. Coming up, episode three is gonna be awesome and you are not gonna to wanna to miss that. That is where we look at what upgrades, uh, what extras we deal with now and what things I'm gonna to leave till later and do them myself after the fact. A lot of great information, make sure you don't miss it. Thank you for joining me on this episode and I will see you soon.